Right. Uh, any questions before we get started today? Yeah. I was just wondering on the, on the homework, like yeah. on, the, on the fill in the blank part, should we still try to show our train of thoughts? You know, like uh, yeah, you could do that. That would be good. So you can show how it matches to the regular question. Yeah. Programmer. 
Oh, oh okay. maybe okay. Still works as intended. Yes. I mean, okay. I mean, as in, as in yes. it causes no compilation errors. Right. It makes no significant. Okay. If no you added, let's say, between. yes. If you're one character difference, but you added an extra space here, right? I guess that would be the best case scenario. What about second best? Uh, creates. Wait, a, let's go over here. Yeah. Um, your compiler yells at you and tells you to fix it. Yeah. Why is that the be the second best case? So you know where the problem is. You know where the problem is, no, but not only do you know where it is, right? Yeah. Like, you know any consequences don't happen? Yeah, no one said, you never, you didn't release the code with a bug in it, right? You caught it before it ever got deployed because your compiler told you that there was a problem. So yeah, the worst, I mean, the best way would be if you, uh, probably if you got rid of this plus here, I think the compiler would complain. Or you didn't close the parentheses uh, correctly, right? The compiler would complain. Or if you change do to something like to, T-O, right? I think the compiler would complain in that case. Um, what's, what's the... So let's go go down the levels. Yeah, what's below that? Oh, I was going to say the oh, worst please. case. Sure. Uh, your rocket ship blows up. <laughs> <laughs> your rocket ship blows up. Yeah, in this case, there was no people on the rocket ship, so that's not even, I guess, the absolute worst case. But there's still a lot of money goes into rockets, right? So still not the best case. But uh, let's talk about, regardless of where it goes out into production, right, what some of the other levels below compiler throws an error? It creates an error that you don't realize until you've uh, distributed the products. You have to, and it's bad enough you have to make a recall. Yeah, so that would be yeah. So I guess well below that would be okay. Basically, generally, if it escapes, it still compiles, right? But it has a subtle error that only occurs either in production and doesn't occur during testing. So this line is a for loop. What do you think this line is? The signing. An assignment, yeah, isn't that crazy? So because um, because in Fortran the spaces aren't significant, what the compiler sees is it sees the second one as a variable called do 15i being assigned to 1.100 decimal. So they did variable assignment instead of a loop. So think about any of the programs you've written. When you wanted a loop, if instead you got variable assignment, that would probably be pretty bad, right? And unfortunately, this happened in such a way that it didn't, the bug wasn't triggered or whatever didn't happen until it was actually in flight and caused the rocket to blow up. So anyways, this goes to show that uh, parsing errors are, I mean, you know, lexical analysis is very important in understanding how the language actually derives tokens from your input. It also kind of says that, yeah, white space in some cases you do want to be significant. Yeah. <laughs> Did they say what that was doing? Like, ever? Ooh. What it was doing? Yeah, like what, like what it was assigned, like what? Uh, I, I don't remember. Uh, you can look it up. There's a good couple good postings on it. Uh, it also may be not 100% true. I don't know. This is definitely a problem in Fortran that people have identified. There's some debate. Some people say that, like, yes, this was definitely the problem. Some people say it wasn't. It was something else. I don't know. It's a cool example, though, right? Help you think about your own code. Also, be very careful if you're writing software that goes on rockets. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to go over another example of doing lexing and uh, longest prefix matching. So, what we're going to do, let's see if this works. All right, let's see if I can manage this. Okay, so let's go over an example. Uh, we're going to say our symbols, what symbols do we want? Let's go A, B, C. I feel like that's pretty easy, right? Um, okay, I need some regular expressions. Uh, let's call them alpha. Using the previous 
Yeah, it's using the previous definition of the regular expression, right? We say it ends with a B, too, because that's important. Right? So this just means, okay, just substitute this whole thing in here for A. Right? So it doesn't, uh, it's not changing it or adding it or, I don't know, we're not saying there's a symbol A. And that's why in the homeworks and on the exams, we'll use Greek symbols for the regular expressions. That way it's very clear what are regular expressions and what are the symbols in our alphabet. Uh, but here we define the symbols, so we got a little bit of a leeway. Okay. So, but can I do something like this? Can I say, okay, it's, uh, let's say C star uh, followed by an A followed by a big C. Can I do that? No. no. Why? It hasn't been defined yet. Yeah, exactly, right? So we're, this isn't a, we can't do any recursive regular expression definitions. How would this, how would you terminate this regular expression, right? It would go on forever. Um, so yeah, we definitely can't do that. So let's say, you know, let's just, we'll keep it simple. Any number of C's followed by a C. Let's say two C's. Okay. Huh? These are all lowercase, yes. Yeah, can't you tell the difference between my amazing handwriting? <laughs> sure, totally. Okay, good. Glad we're clear on that. Okay, so a string, let's go with the string. We're trying to parse is, all right. Um, Trying to, well, it's going to be difficult to come up with something that exactly works and shows up everything we want to do. Um, let's go to this A, 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 B, A, uh, B, C, C. Maybe have any ideas? So this has to be at least length two, this has to be at least length one, this has to be at least length three. Um, all right, so let's first look at just the A. So, okay, does any of these just match A? Big A. Big A, why big A? Ah, but to match it, it has to match all of them. 
It has to, so to be in the matching column, it has to have matched this entire regular expression. It has to be a string that's in L of A. Oh, so it, be at, at the point <coughs> it has to be all the way at the end of the regular expression. We have to have matched it completely. Okay. So it has the potential to be A, yeah, definitely. And also B. Also B because B starts with A. It, it does match A. It does match A? How does it match A? A star goes up. Yeah, right? So the language described by A, if this is zero or more, this is zero or more, uh, we can, we have the string, we have a bunch of other crap in there, but we also just have the string A by itself. So yeah, A will also be a matching. Uh, for potential, so we have A is potentially matching because the first, right? Oh, because it could be any number of A's. Including exactly, including zero. Yep. Okay. Uh, so B is potentially matching, right? It's pretty straightforward. We have the A right here. Uh, is C, can C be potentially matching this? No. No? Mm -hmm. Right? So there's no strings in the language described by C that start with an A. Right? They all have to, I mean, they're all combinations of C, but none of them start with A. So we know A is not a matching. Uh, or, sorry, C is not in the potential. Okay, so then for match, we have A with length 1. Okay, so we still have potential, so we're just going to move on. So now we're going to look at AB. Uh, AA. Sorry, AA, yes. Uh, let's just go like this. So that's a little bit easier. Okay, AA. Does A match? Still match AA? Yes. yes. One A here, this goes zero or more, and one at the end. Yeah, so we have A matching here. Uh, potential, does A still have the potential to match? Yes. Yep. No? Yes. 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 Right, potential to match would be a prefix, right? Is, it, is there a prefix in here that matches A, A? Yeah, zero or more here, right? So we can have those match those two A's, and then we still have the rest of the string to go, uh, the rest of the regular expression to go. So we can continue uh, going through that. So A still matches. What about B? No, not anymore. Actually, no. Because it starts with the A and then oh, yeah. the A, it can call them any more A's. Yeah, it can. So B still does have the potential. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. 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 That's, okay. that's capital, right? So that's not a capital. This is a capital A, right? This just means this regular expression. So you substitute this entire regular oh, so expression there. It could be, yeah, it could be potentially matching. It could be potentially matching? Yeah. I'm just like yes, I'm just say no. Yes, 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 right. yes. It potentially matches. Yeah. So this A, the first A in the string would match this A, the B would go to zero, and then the A star from in here would match the second A. Right, so we still have B matching. And we have the longest match so far is A of match two, of like two. Okay, so now we have A, A, B. So the string A, A, B. Does it match A though? Not anymore. Not anymore. Why? Because it's 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 <laughs> exactly right. There's a B at the end. So this means that right, this A right here means that every string that's in the language of A must end with a single A. The string A A B is not in the language described by A, right? Because it has a B at the end. There's no possible way that it's in the language described by A. So A is no longer matching. Um, what about, so is it uh, have the potential to match? Yeah. Yes. yes. Right. AAB, the prefix AAB is still in the language described by A, right? Two A's here, one B here. So it's still here in the potential. Uh, what about, so now let's talk about B. So does B match? Yes. Yes, yes. yes? how? Um, because the first A is the first A, and then the second A is called the big A, and it ends on a B. Yep. So this would be, this A matches this A. Yep. Uh, the B goes to zero. The first A in here goes to zero. B and C both go to zero. This A matches this A here. And then we come back here, this B matches this B right here. Yep. So now we got a match for B. Uh, does B still have the potential to match?
say that you keep going because at the top one in A, you have A, B, and C that are all infinite. Right, so you have A, you can have any number of A's and B's here, right? So this first A has to match the A that's in the start of B, right? This B star has to go to zero, but in here, the A can match that first A, but then the B's can go into any number of B's followed by an A followed by a B. So yeah, we still have the potential to match in B, right, a longer string. But we have, so the longest match so far is B3, so are we done? number of, exactly. So if we, no matter what character is here, right, A, B, or C, if it's an A, uh, is this string in the language described by A? Yeah. No. Nope. So we, because it has to end with, well, any number of B's or C's followed by a single A, right? Uh, Once we put the B or the C down, exactly. the next and character has, has to be an A. Has to be an A. And that has and to be the end point. of the string. Exactly, so that's not in there. Uh, a, B. Nope, that's not in there, right? Any number of A's, the B matches there, the A matches the A, the B's at the end. And the C? Same deal. Same deal, right? So A no longer has the potential to match. So now let's look at B. So the first question is, does B match? So B is not in matching, why? Because it doesn't end on it. Yeah, it's going back. Because for B, it has to end in a B. Right, for B, for B to match, it has to end in a B. <coughs> right, that's what this says, the same logic that we just talked about with A. So, it doesn't match, but does it have the potential to match? Yes. yes. Yeah. So now, the what we've seen so far is A, sorry, as we get closer to the bottom here, it makes the writing weird. Now we have A of length four. Cool. All right. So now we look at another. We go A, A, B, B A, B. Okay. Now, which regular expressions do we look at? Do we look at A? No. Exactly. It's not in our potential. So we only look at B. So now we say, does this match? Matches B. Does it have the potential to match B? No. 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 Right. Yeah. We got to the end, and we can't extend anymore. Right. So there's I mean, no more potential. I mean, <laughs> What's that? Match and has no more potential. Exactly. Yeah. So now we've got to here, right? So what do we say that the that the token that matches here is? B. Yeah. Exactly. So this is what we're going to return. So if we call get token on this input, right, it's going to first return B. And it's going to consume the first five five symbols of the input string, right? A, A, B, A, B. These are all gone from the input string now. And once we make this decision, this decision is final. So we've gone as far as we can. We don't ever go back and try to reparse and say, oh, maybe we'll get a longer second token if we had taken a here with four, maybe that would allow us to parse more. Uh, so we only go through that with here. Okay. So now these five characters are gone. So what's the string that we're gonna be matching? What's what's the next character we're gonna be matching? C. C. Yeah. All right. So of just ah, uh, this is getting a little weird. Okay. Of just C. Right? 
Which one of these? So does A match? No. No. Does it have the potential to match? Yes. Yes, right? We have the C here. So any number of C's followed by an A would match A. So we know A is potentially matching. Uh, what about B? No. Because it has to start with at least one A. Right, exactly. It has to start with an A, right? So there's no possible way that this uh, the string C could match B. Uh, what about C? Yeah. 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 Well, it has the potential to match. has the potential to match, exactly. OK, we don't have any match yet, and we don't have a longest match. All right. Now the string CC. Does it CC, does it match, a? does it match A? No. No, does it have the potential? Yes. Yeah, because we have to do any number of C's in here. What about <coughs> the big C? Yes. Does it match? Yes. And does it have the potential to match? Yes. Yeah. So we have, it matches C, and we still have A, C that are possible. So this is C, like one? Would it be C2? Two. Character C C A. Okay, C C A. So does that match? So we have A and C that we're considering. So let's think of A. Does that match A? Yes. Yeah. So this first A goes to zero. These C's, two of these match the first two C's, and the last A matches here. That's a full match. Is it in the potential? No. No. No? Why? Because we've, yeah, we've ended the string. We've ended on the end. We got to, got to the end, so no A in there. Okay, C. Is it, this in C? It contains no. something that isn't a C. Right, it doesn't. Yeah, exactly. So it's CCA, it can't possibly be in there. And that's that token. Yeah, exactly. Right, so this is the next token that's going to be returned. So we'd first return B, then return big A. Star means that it could be 
we could have more A's followed by more B's and C's, right? We don't know what's after this string. Um, so we have A here in the match. We have A in the potential. Uh, the longest match so far is A1. Uh, but now we've reached the end of the string, right? There's nothing at the end. So you just submit token. Yeah, and so now we've reached the end. There is no more potential because there's no more potential <coughs> string to match. Uh, so we say, what's the longest match so far? Ooh, that was a terrible, terrible line. So we return A as our last token. And now we've completely parsed this input string until we have to parse it yeah. So what exactly would be the syntax for an error? Like if we just writing this, like if, if, it, if we just wound up having just an orphan B, like just a B all by itself, we don't have the syntax to parse that. Correct. Uh, what would be the methodology in that? So we just had a B by itself, right? Does that match here? No. Well, it could match, right? But just a B by itself, the single string B, right? It has to end in an A. Um, this B here, no, can that be in here? With an a. Has to start with an A and have an A and a B. This has to have at least two Cs. Um, so the lexer that you'll be using pretty much throughout the rest of the course, specifically in the next project, is going to have, um, there's two kind of special tokens. Uh, one is EOF, what's EOF stand for? End of file. Yeah, end of file, right? So that's when you've reached the end of the input. Right? There's no more string to parse. So for instance, uh, when we've gotten here, right, when we've gotten here, um, if we call get token again, well, we've parsed all of the input string, right? There's no more input string, so we would return end of file. Um, I believe the token, so for the other instance, when we have something that's an invalid token, uh, I believe we have an error token. Um, and so depending on your program, right, you have to decide how you handle that. If you just ignore it and try to go on, get rid of that, go on to the next one. Um, if you just quit and tell the programmer, hey, there was an error, that depends. So in say anything definitively, I would say it's a safe bet that I would probably not give you something that you're doing by hand where there's going to be an error. On purpose. On purpose, yes. So first, I would double check what you're doing to make sure that you didn't make a mistake because that's the <coughs> likely case. Uh, the unlikely case would be I accidentally put in an error in there, which is possible, it's definitely possible, but I'm not, I'm not perfect. So the whole line should tokenize. Yeah. Unless the instructions specifically say, you know, catch errors, call get token on this, and if uh, if you ever get an invalid input, uh, return an error token and delete that character, and then try parsing afterwards. Yeah. So you would never try and re-parse it. You, you never do that, right? Like try Correct. and break it up differently. No. So that's the thing, right? So this is a so from the perspective of once I decide that this token is the longest match. I throw away that input, I never change that decision going forward. Cool. More questions on this? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just in the whole table. Just for like the last thing, the A, it could have potentially mattered B2, right? I mean, it doesn't matter because, I mean, it's the last one. But for the very last one, it could, it could have potentially mattered B2, right? Oh, yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, the B could match here, so yeah, it's a potential. The Okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Absolutely. I was wondering if that's like a thing for the last one. Or no, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah, it could have matched B as well. Uh, but then when we look at the next one, we say yeah, we say yeah, it's the end of the exactly. file. Yeah, that's a good point. And in this is instance, if we had a, a particular string that where A and B both match the whole way through, uh, and then we reached an inv you know, we reached the end of it, we would put precedence towards A rather than towards B. Exactly. Yeah. So we know. From the list here, right, A has more higher precedence than B or C. Uh, for instance, the string, uh, is that in there? Yeah, AAB, right? The string, if we had AAB, right, just this string. I thought we had this at some point. Oh, no, that, because that doesn't match A. That's tricky. Yeah. But we just 
we can't have a string that's both A and B with the way right. we've set it up. Yeah. But if it existed. Exactly. So yeah, if you had, I don't know, well, uh, if you had, let's say, A as a, A star A and B for some reason as an A, A star. I mean, in this case, they're identical, so uh, any parsing any input will always give you A. Quick example that we kind of went over Friday after class, I believe. So here we have, we're going to use the, the regular expressions that we've already defined, num and dot. Uh, these will be m decimal. And we don't really need the exact definitions of them. I mean, if we were really doing this, we would. Um, but I just want to quickly go through this to see that uh, when I say there's no backtracking, right? I mean, there's no backtracking when we decide on a longest token. We never change that decision. But for instance, here, we have a string, uh, we have match, uh, potential, and let's say longest match. Right, so we're going to first look at just the string one. Uh, does one match a number? Mm -hmm. Yep, right. <coughs> uh, does it match a dot? No. Does it match a decimal? Yep. All right. It has a potential, yeah. So does it have the potential to match a number? Yeah. Uh, potential to match a dot? No. No, no possibility. Uh, potential to match a decimal, right? Yeah. So now we know the longest we've seen so far is num one. Okay, let's look at one dot. So now, so does it match num? No. No? Right, that's not a number. Does it match decimal? One dot, remember, so just refresh, right? We specifically wrote it so we'd have to have number dot followed by zero, a decimal place, right? Uh, so nothing matches. Uh, does num have the possibility of matching? No. no. Does decimal have the possibility of matching? Yes. Yeah. So what's the longest match you've seen so far? Num one. Yeah, num one, right? Num dot dot, does that match decimal? No. Does it have the potential to match decimal? No. no, at this point right now, we know that this, can, this input is not in the language defined by a decimal, right? It was, I believe, something like num dot, in essence, num, but that's not exactly right. Right, so nothing matches there. So what, what token are we going to return here? Yeah, num1, right? So this is the token that we return when we call get input there. And where do we start parsing from? Our next, when we call get token again, the next, where are we going to start our lexical analysis from? After we're num1 ends. Yeah, after we're num1 ends, right? Just here. So we're going to start parsing dot, right? So even though we had to look three ahead, and we said, well, it's possible it could have been decimal, Right? We had to look three characters ahead to figure out that, hey, decimal actually doesn't match here. So then we go back and say, what's the longest match? That's why we keep track. And so we say, that's what we return. So there is some backtracking, right? So we're backtracking to the last number, that, uh, the last longest match that we've seen. Yeah? Now, does it actually backtrack like that, or does it just go, OK, now let's go back to the start of the screen we started at and go over x amount? Yeah, yeah. I mean, backtrack is kind of a, I'm using it loosely here, right? So yeah, you, you try to look at, look at these three characters, right? And then you'd say, okay, none of these match, so I need to go back to the 
Yeah, I would go back to the start because you know exactly the length, right? So you go back and then you move one forward. And then you say, okay, let's start parsing at dot now. Um, so then you'd say, okay, that matches dot, right? It doesn't match anything else. Dot one. You'd return that. And then you'd do the same thing again with the next dot and return a dot. So this would return, uh, get token on this would be num dot dot num. Cool. Does that make sense? Does everybody understand the backtracking thing here? Right. What do you think about like look ahead, right? We're looking ahead to see if any of the regular expressions matching. Sequence of tokens, right? Num dot dot num decimal dot id dot. Um, but we want to transform that into actually something that's useful that we can compute on, right? This is just a sequence of tokens. So we need to we want to extract some more meaning from this, um, and we need to do something else, right? So what? Say, so what do we know about? I mean, I don't know. We have an input is a series of tokens, right? What do we know about that? Our are, is every sequence of tokens valid in our language? No. No, no right? Some sequences, are, so if we have an invalid token, right, that's a big error, right? Um, yeah, so it's going to be, it's going to say, hey, you, there's an input token here, I don't recognize this Unicode character, it's not my language, right, whatever, uh, I'm going to throw an error. But we want some way to check and specify if a sequence of tokens is valid in our program, right? For instance, is this, would this be valid? Yes, probably. If plus is a token, right? I mean, yes, we're obviously defining a, I don't know, we haven't defined, I guess the correct answer is, well, it depends on what we're talking about. But intuitively, in most programming languages, a number plus a number is a valid sequence of tokens. What about like decimal dot num? Could be inside of a string. Well, if it was inside of a string, the token the token would be string. Yeah, yeah exactly. So no. So <laughs> no. Although, what about anybody programming Ruby? Yeah. So, um, what's the interest? One of the interesting features. What are some interesting features about Ruby that may be relevant here? It's got a cool name. It's not really relevant. So. Um, so the, one of the defining to me one of the defining things is that everything is an object. And in Ruby, when we say everything is an object, we mean everything. Like the number one is an object that <coughs> defines the integer one. So you can actually call methods and treat one like an object. So you can write Ruby code that's the literal one dot some function. You can say one dot times. You can say one dot up to. They'll do the loop. Um, so you can think of this as maybe could be a weird language that's defining like you can. I don't know, have stuff on numbers, but really it's really terrible, right? Because decimal followed by a dot followed by a number. Or you can think about how that would look, like 10.10.10, .10 .10, right? I don't know, maybe you're trying to do an IP address or something. <laughs> yeah, or, or maybe a software version number. What about id.id? .id? Could that be valid? That would be an object. Yeah, just be like an object call, right? So like an identifier dot an identifier. So you want to call some method or send a message to the first object. Um, 
I think you get crazy, right? Because it doesn't really matter. So <laughs> at this point, we've just defined tokens, right? So now we have this series of tokens. So we want to know, OK, are these things actually valid? OK, so we've learned about regular expressions, right? So let's, let's use regular, regular expressions to do this. I already told you, right? They're fast. They're easy. Are they easy-ish to understand? Or hopefully you're starting to develop some intuition about looking at a regular expression and what it means. Uh, so let's use regular expressions, right? So we'll say a program is made up of zero or more statements, right? More or less. And a statement can be an expression, an if statement, a while statement, right? any number of different ki kinds of statements in your program. Uh, we'll define operators as plus, minus, multiply, divide. We'll say an expression is either a number, an ID, a decimal, followed by an operator, followed by a number, ID, or decimal. Is that how you think of an expression? Like a mathematical expression in a program? Right? You want to perform some computation on two numbers? So does this match? Yes. So the five is going to be which token? Num. Num plus is going to be the plus token, the operator token. Yeah. Ten is going to be another number. Another number. Right? So yeah, this matches. Regular expression. So we turn this into tokens, and we say, do the tokens match? What about foo minus bar? Yeah. Yeah? ID minus an ID. ID minus ID? Yeah, it's definitely in there. What about this? series of statements, right? So one possible statement is an expression. So does one plus two match expression? Yeah. Yeah, that matches. But for this to be a program, it has to be a <coughs> zero or more expressions, right? So the next thing after it must be another expression. Is plus three an expression? No. 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 Yes. What? Yeah. no. Right? No. Yeah, so we have one. Exactly. So it parses, so the first two, one plus two, is an expression, right, matches this regular expression. But statement, uh, program is multiple statements. So this is a statement. Is this a statement? No. No. So no. stop at the plus and say, I don't know what to do. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So it turns out that uh, regular expressions are not sufficient. They're not actually expressive enough. If you think of the entire set of languages that could be described by regular expressions, they actually aren't powerful enough to express this fact that, hey, we want an expression should be, well, an expression, uh, an operator, and another expression, right? So you can have sub-expressions, and you can have nesting like this, which is how we think about it. Um, I'll, split, I'll guarantee you we're not going to go into the details in this class, so you can prove this, do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, people who've taken 355, do you do that in 355? Yes, good. OK, so I don't want to spoil anything. Um, so then when we come back, we'll look at how to write a regular expression for matching parentheses, right? A very simple um, operation that we might want to do. Uh, so we'll stop here. But before everybody gets ready to go, I will say, so I teach another class at 1030. And I notice there's nobody in this room. So uh, if you guys want to, I don't know, I can do like an office hours thing in here for about 20 minutes or so from like 10.50 to, what is it, 9.50 to 10.10 10 or so. Uh, so if you want to do that and you want to do stuff, just let me know. I'll but if you're not going to be here, I I'll record it and put it online. So you don't have to like definitely see it. Okay, it's a little...